You are listening to Hmong American Buzz. When you're trying to take a path that like isn't a common path, where you haven't seen a lot of us do it and and succeed in it, yeah, of course people are gonna say what they want to say. But you know, I, I I try to channel that like frustration into like just succeeding. I mean, So, Aaron, what do you think about the Raptors beating Golden State on Game One? I love it. Who doesn't love it? I love it too, but I have a feeling Golden State's gonna come back and win it. You be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on now! Don't we all think like that? Come on, Golden State is too good. I mean, Kawhi Leonard's the MVP right now. Hopefully yeah, but he can't. I mean, he has a good supporting backup to uh, team too. But then Golden State has a better all-around roster. Well, Golden State doesn't have a bench though. That's their problem. They don't. But what they got rid of their they got rid of their bench this year to get Cousin and KD all the money. Yeah, but once KD gets back though, it might be game over. Oh, uh, he's gonna be out for the next game too, and yeah. he might be out for game three. But he'll be back sooner or later. And by the time we get to game four, I mean three zero. No, it might know. be two one, one two. Who knows? Because the next game's in Toronto. And then the next two games, that would be in Golden State. And then they go back to Toronto again. Yeah, I suppose. But whatever. It's not a Timberwolves, so I don't really care. <laughs> don't even want to talk about Timberwolves, I know. <laughs> oh, man. So, Sue. Yeah? You been watching the news lately? Let me ask you this. When was the last time you watched the news on TV in general? Honestly, I haven't watched TV for... Months now. I'm normally on my laptop just watching movies, Netflix, or Hulu. Why? What's up? Oh, no, I'm just asking because I haven't watched the news in years. I think 2015 was oh, the last gosh. time I actually seen the news. Yeah, I normally just surf the web and yeah. look at, you know, head, um, breaking news or the weather in general. That might not be a good thing because the person with anything that happens to be a news anchor. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't tell him that. Come on. <laughs> oh, don't worry. He won't know about it. Unless if he... Or until he listened to the intro of this. <laughs> Speaking so, of which, who are we interviewing today? Good question, Aaron. So today we are interviewing Chinuher. He is currently a news anchor in Virginia. And speaking of which, I think he is one of... I think there might be less than 10 people, 10 more people, news anchors, maybe? Yes, that's I true. I know for sure there's three from the top of my head. Well, we know for sure there's not too many uh, Mo News anchor slash journalists out there. So it's, you know, it's a very unique feel for our community. Let's say this. He is the only one in Virginia. The only Mo News anchor in Virginia. For sure, yep. And possibly that side of the country. I know that there's one or two in California and there's one in Wisconsin and another in the Twin Cities here. That's all Midwest and west side he's in the east side yeah uh uh-huh. but yeah uh so uh, you're gonna hear about that in this podcast me and Chinu, we go way back we used to work together back in the high school days we didn't go to the same high school but we worked together the workplace that we worked at was fast food uh was in between both our schools so that's how we met and we worked with friends as well at that place. So yeah, so we go way back, me and Chinu, and um, it's been a while since I've talked with him, but I really appreciate his time just to, uh, you know, share what he's been so far with us. And last for about a decade later, he's on TV and you're on the internet. So who's most successful? Your voice on the internet or him being on TV? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, how are we trying to say, huh? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you tell me. <laughs> you both took two different paths. He's on TV. You're you're the voice of the internet. I th- I think both has their own perks. Let's put it that way. Ah, uh, let's get to the interview. Hey, how's it going, you know? Yeah, I'm good, man. How are you guys? Doing, We're doing good. good as well. So before we begin, can you share to the audience a little about yourself? Yeah. So uh, my name is Chinu Her. Um, I was born and raised in the Twin Cities, and then I went to college there. 
Um, and uh, yeah, the dad, when I got done with school in 2013, I moved um, out west um, to Oregon for my first job in TV news. And then I was there for two and a half, almost three years. And then I moved to uh, Virginia Beach, Norfolk area. But yeah, I grew up, I grew up in the Twin Cities. Um, yeah, I loved it. So I didn't really leave to go far away for school or anything. And then, um, yeah, I, I, had to, I had to end up leaving when I got my first job. But, um, yeah, I've kind of just been uh, moving around since. So I've seen a couple of, of YouTube videos of you. So are you a, a, I guess they like to call it a TV personality now or a TV news anchor now? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a reporter. I anchor some um, for, uh, yeah, for, for uh, the, a, the ABC station in the Virginia Beach area. So... I this is now my second like full time job um, as a as a journalist so um, um, yeah I'm doing that now and uh, I've been doing that for for a while now so I'm 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 enjoying it I'm having a good time doing it man so let's rewind back to how you got started so why did you want to become a journalist first of all I I really like to tell stories I mean you know you know how it is for us you know we're Hmong and like you know you kind of grow up with your your parents or your grandparents they always tell stories right like about you know, back in the day or whatever, you know, kind of throughout our history, that's kind of just how we we uh, keep keep track of what's happened. You know, we, we tell stories, you know. Um, and so I've always just kind of liked that, um, the aspect of telling stories. And then as I got older, I became interested in, um, like, kind of pairing that with journalism because, that, I mean, that is what journalism is. You're telling stories. And then also, like, growing up, like, my parents just always watched the news, so I was always around it. So yeah, but I the, it kind of just naturally happened that like I went into news, you know. So yeah, it was just very a very natural um, decision for me. So like I went to college knowing exactly what I wanted to do, and I never switched my major or anything. So I just went straight into it, and I've been doing it since. So so I'm going through uh, a USA Today story about you in the past. It says that here you went from Oregon and then you came back to Minnesota. Is that oh, right? So. So I no, so I went to I went to Oregon uh, for about two and a half years, and then from there I moved straight to Virginia. But um, but I come home often, um, and then also when I was in college, um, I interned at uh, Channel Four WCCO, and then I also interned at Channel Five. So um, yeah, I've kind of been all over the place. So uh, for these industry, what do you what exactly to have you do? Uh, I you know I'm 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 a pretty I'm, I'm like a, I'm a general assignment reporter so. You know, every day I go in, you know, whatever the big stories of the day are, I'll get assigned, like, a story. And then my job is to just, like, do all the research and, you know, go out and report the, the story. So, you know, just like if you guys watch the news that over there, you know, I do the same thing. Um, you know, I – and then sometimes I anchor. Um, so a, a variety of things. And I cover, you know, anything from breaking news to crime to politics to, um, you know, more feature-type stories. So – I'm kind of all over the place. So you say as an intern, they actually let you go out on the field and report stuff. Yeah, so when I was in college and I was interning, uh, so I didn't actually get to report. I wasn't on air when I was interning. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I was interning, I did a couple different internships. I was never on air, so I didn't start reporting news on air until I graduated college and got my first job in Oregon. Oh, that's interesting because I've looked up at the background a little bit of uh, internship in news news reporting and stuff like that, and usually... All the stories here, they say you get the coffee, you make prints of paper and stuff like that. So I didn't actually know that yeah. they, would, they would trust intern to send them on the field. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, yeah, that's like a, um, that's what I was like. So when I was getting my first internship, I was like, is that what they're going to have me do? Is just like do, you know, all this like pointless work. But no, like, I, you know, I was also very fortunate because I, I interned for like really good stations and they, um, they really like, they had high standards, and so, you know, they didn't let us just go in and sit around and not do anything. They actually put us to work. Um, so I learned a lot through doing internships. I mean, I learned, I would say I learned more about the business interning than I did, you know, going to college. Right on. So when you go to college, uh, were there any certain processes or tests that you have to complete in order to do what you do currently? Uh, no, not necessarily. Um, I think... Um, so I went to Northwestern uh, in Roseville. So I was in the Twin Cities. So you know, I think a lot of that like very valuable like experience, like the, the valuable experiences, came through me interning because it was a lot more hands on. 
it's not like uh, other industries, like say you know um, teaching, where I have to be licensed or anything like that. You know, I had my experience interning, and then yeah, sent out a resume and all over the place. I sent out resumes like all over the place out of, out of college, just trying to get a job. And um, yeah, the, the station in Oregon uh, contacted me; they liked my work, and so I packed up and left and <laughs> moved out west. So, were you willing to go anywhere when you sent out your your uh, resume? Yeah, yeah, I was. So I was willing to go wherever. I I just told myself as long as like there's a job offer and like the station seems like a good fit for me, then I was willing to go. So my goal was to have a job lined up before I graduated from school. And so around like, and I graduated in May of 2013. So around like January, I was like getting all my stuff together, getting ready to send it all out. And、um, I mean, I must have sent my resume to like. At least like forty to fifty stations. You know, at that point for me, it was just like a numbers <laughs> game. It's like get it out, yeah, get it out. So that's what I did. <laughs> I'm curious. So how long did it took you before you、uh, actually started being on camera? Oh, so my my first TV job, I and mean, I was I was on camera the first week. So really,、um, yeah, yeah. I got there, and then they trained me up on you know how to use all the gear and and the the different softwares that we used.、Um, and then yeah, like that week I was. I was out there doing it for real, and then to follow on that, how comfortable were you? <laughs> oh man, that, I mean that's that's the thing, you know. It's like like this time I was doing it for real, you know. It, it wasn't、yeah. like it was like when I was an intern and I'd be in the field watching a reporter do it and like taking notes. Like I was doing it for real, so yeah, it was like nerve wracking for for a, a while because you know like. Like, like people are watching you do it, you know, and yeah, it was nerve wracking because not only are people watching you do it, but you know, in order for me to get better, I also had to watch myself, you know, and so it's always uncomfortable watching yourself, you know, especially that early on in the game where you're still very, very green and you know, you still have a lot of areas to improve on. So that's that was kind of what was going on right right there off the bat. Uh, let's retract back. So earlier you said that you cover general fields in the、yeah. in the news industry. I have to ask this: What is your favorite field that you like to cover? Man, that's a good question. I get I get asked that a lot. I think early on in my career, I I really liked I really liked covering、uh, like breaking news, like spot news, because it was just kind of exciting. Like you you know like something happens and like boom, you're there on scene and you're trying to like. Put together all the pieces and, and trying to figure out like what's going on, and I really like that. But you know, as as I'm as I've been in the industry a little bit longer, and I'm getting a little bit older, I'm starting to like take more of a liking to politics, and that's you know national and like local politics. So you know, I've been doing a lot of like coverage for local politics here in this area, and I always tell people like you know. Keep an eye out of what's going on in your in your city. What's going on with your local government? Because there's a lot of stuff that happens that I think people miss because they don't pay attention. And so I think that's like right as of right now. I think that's kind of like what I what I enjoy the most is is probably politics and government. But who knows? That could change. Right,、uh, so going back to、uh, breaking news. So every everybody, every reporter, every journalist, every station wants to be the first one to break the news. Right. 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 So how hectic is it when、uh, something happens and it's just like, all right, you know, go? Is it just like yeah, that? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Usually, it's 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 pretty quick like that.、Um, I think what 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 the viewers don't see、um, from home is kind of how when the moment something breaks like that to when we go on air and present the news. Is like there's just there are just so many hands on deck, like making sure that we get the right information and that you know the information that we get is like properly vetted so that it's true and you know you 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 start to kind of filter out well it's fact, what's fiction, what's a rumor, what's you know actually happening. So、um, yeah, it's 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 a quick process, but like being the reporter, usually right when something happens, you know, like I'm in the car on my way to where I need to go, I'm making phone calls. People at my like、uh, the people at the station,、uh, like our managers and stuff, are are making calls. They're like you know also reaching out to people. So there's a lot that goes into into like breaking news because you know again like it's really important for us to it's important for us to like break it fast and like be first. But it's more important that we're we're correct. So a lot of hands on deck when something breaks, getting all your information together. Right, right. So yeah, because it has to be 100. Correct, you know. So accuracy, of course, is very important in what we do. So when something breaks, there are lots of hands on deck to make sure that 
we're doing everything right. And now I'm assuming you also compete with all these other news outlets. Since yeah, you're all yeah. racing at the same time, everyone <laughs> wants to be in the spot. Yeah. All, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So you're competing with like all the other stations and the newspapers and you know, it is like a quote unquote competition, but then again, you know, like being in our industry, we're all like pretty like we're pretty good to each other. But are you guys all fighting for witnesses, police report, all that stuff too? Or is it uh, first come, first serve? Kind of, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, when, when you're all out there, um, when you're all out there at the same time, I mean, if I'm interviewing someone and, like, another reporter jumps in, you know, you just, it, it happens, you know, so. Yeah, I'm just curious because every time they say breaking news and then they're real to the reporter, they're nice makeup, hair's all done, clean, ready, professional <laughs> girl, but then, like, <laughs> You just gotta travel halfway across the city, and then it's like yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it, that's the that's that's funny. Like it's that's one of those things that like at least tell people like the the industry is not as glamorous as people think it is. Because like you know like I work in Virginia, like it is humid here in the summer. It's like so hot, and you know like out there if there's breaking news like that, like I'm not putting on makeup. I'm I don't worry about doing my hair. Like I just the camera comes on and you just go. You know so yeah, it's it's not as glamorous as it. it, it if, if I'm in the studio, then, of course, like, I have more time to, like, get ready and stuff. But if it's breaking news like that and I'm out in the field, you know, it's like, you know, I don't, I don't worry about putting yeah. makeup on and things like that. I'm curious now. So, breaking news uh, is basically, like, uh, on call, right? Kind of, yeah, yeah. So, so, like, if something breaks during my shift, then I just go. You know, and we do have on call people as well. So, like, usually in a newsroom, there's always someone working. Like, there's always someone in the building. There's always someone in the newsroom. Um, but we have like, you know, we will have like a, a little window, uh, usually overnight, where there's not a reporter or a photographer in the newsroom. So we'll be on call um, in case anything crazy happens, and then you know we need someone to come in and go cover it. So. Gotcha. So, do you work a certain amount of days only, or does your schedule fluctuate all over? Oh, oh, yeah. I work. I work Monday through Friday, and I work the night shifts. I work from two thirty to eleven thirty, and it'll vary. I mean, depending on like who's on vacation, who's off, and stuff. I might get switched to a different shift, but my, my shift is usually Monday through Friday, the night shift. I'm assuming you're one of the, I guess, the younger anchor working there. Uh, it, it's a pretty good mix. My station here, it's a pretty good mix. Um, you know, the group, the reporters, you know, they're all like around my age or a little bit yeah. younger or older, give or take. And then we have like the, we, then we have like the veterans of the newsroom who've been here for a long time, who knows, they know what they're doing. And, you know, they're, they're kind of the ones that like people like me can learn from, you know, yeah, they've been there forever. I think you, how long you been in Virginia or at that station? I've been here for three and a half years. I came here in December of 2015. Mm -hmm. Since you're one of the, the younger guys there, I'm assuming you get most of the time, you get, I don't want to say less important story, but the, the oh, small I, I see. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. No, actually, no, actually, um, I've, I've covered some pretty big stories here. The, 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 th the cool thing I like about, um, about, and I'm speaking solely just about my station, is that I think my managers really like trust. Um, they have a lot of trust in us. To cover big stories, and um, and and we have like some of our some of our like more experienced reporters. They have like really specific like beats that they cover. So okay. so you know it, there's like if something big happens and I'm there, like I'll cover it, or one of my coworkers will cover it. But yeah, there, there's uh, not much of an issue with that as far as like not having like important stories to cover. Okay, so. Not everybody is trying to fight for that big story then. Yeah, yeah. Usually my managers will sign so so that there's no so there's never really an issue like, you know, being you know, with, with like my coworkers where I'm like, I should be covering that story, you know. If my, if my managers make the call then they know what's best, you know. So I just leave that up to them to do it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because I assume it's like, hey, uh, there's a rich guy doing something over there and then the senior people like, I wanna go meet the uh, the popular yeah, and then hey, I yeah. knew you go and do this this side story over here. That's yeah, not, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, fascinating. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't had an issue with that, which is a good thing. So, in your experience that you had so far, what was the most in interesting news coverage that you have ever covered? Wow, I think <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've done so many stories over the years. <laughs> I think one thing that like still kind of like so sticks out to me um, is uh when I went to um. Do you guys remember in Charlottesville about two years ago? Yeah. There were all those yes. riots. Yeah, yeah, I covered yes. that. And it was, man, it was just, that was like unlike anything, man. It just was like, you know, you, like you're you're literally like in 
like at the time, you know, like I'm, I'm like in this like adrenaline rush because I'm in Charlottesville covering all of, you know, what, what was going on. I'm still like in the moment just working, right? And I think it wasn't until like a week or two after all that was done and I was, I was um, kind of just reflecting back on it. And I just like couldn't believe like, holy shit, like that was like a really significant moment in like history, you know? Yes, and like I was there covering it, you know? Like people are going to talk about what happened in Charlottesville for a long time, you know, and I was there covering it. So um, that was kind of cool, like, to, to just, you know, be able to, you know, again, tell stories, you know, um, from from there. Was it <laughs> was it pretty complicated covering with that big of a scale of a story? It wasn't so much as complicated as it was just, like, a lot of work because, you know, that was such a big story. I mean, you have all these national outlets there, you know, CNN was there, ABC News, NBC, like, all the big guys were there, you know, and then then you have all the local people, you know? So it was just a big, um, you know, we, Sh- Charlottesville is, a, is kind of a small town. And so when you have that many media outlets there, it was just kind of like chaotic, you know, like going around around the city and there are just media crews everywhere. So yeah, it wasn't so much as like complicated as it was just like a lot of things that I had to do. Definitely. All right, let's flip the switch then. Uh, what's the most bizarre story that you cover? Oh man, the most bizarre. <laughs> I'm sure you got plenty, but oh man, there's yeah. there's, there's a lot. Um, Try to keep it clean if you can. <laughs> yeah, I like I like surprisingly, you know, I've it, I've covered quite a few stories. It, it has to do with like people hoarding animals. Um, I and animal about that. Tra- yeah, and then animal control has to come and you know deal with all of that stuff. So I've had quite a few um, incidents of that where I've covered like some poor old lady, you know, was hoarding like 50, 60 cats in a house and animal control, you know, has to go out there and seize animals and stuff. So I, I'm covering quite a bit of that, which is like kind of just like bizarre. And then uh, just a quick question to follow up on that. Uh, how do you keep from not cracking a smile? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, that that's a good question because like, I don't really know like how to, I mean, I just don't, you know, so... I don't really know how to explain it. Like, I don't know if there's any sort of, like, weird psychology that, like, helps me not do that. But, I mean, I don't know. You know, your guess is just as good as mine. <laughs> just that switch that you can flip on and off when you go yeah. professional and then when it just... Yeah, back. pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Like, you know, I, I have really cool... I like I like my coworkers. So we, like, we all joke around a lot and stuff. And, you know, we'll, like, if we're on set, we'll, like, joke around and then... Once the director starts counting down, like, all right, like, we're going to be live in 10 seconds, you know? Well, and yeah. then, like, you know, you kind of just game face on and you, you do it, you know? Have you ever tried, when you're at the station, right, and mm-hmm. uh, you're with a, co- with a co-anchor, have you, when the camera pans to your, your co-anchor, have you ever tried to make them break character? <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't do that just because, like, I don't want to, like, mess him up. But during commercial breaks and stuff, you know, we'll, we'll chat and, you know, we'll joke around and stuff because, again, like, you know, I, 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 I do get along with my coworkers pretty yeah. well, and, 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 they're, and they're fun people. So, like, during, like, commercial breaks and stuff, we'll goof around. But for the most I, part, like, when the camera's on, like, we're pretty, we're, we're pretty all, like, all work. So got to be, got to be professional. Right. <laughs> Uh, so, Janu, I'm curious, is there a Hmong community at all in Virginia? Not really in, in like, where I'm at. So, I know there were, um, there was, like, a small Hmong community here when I first moved here, but they were, like, military people, because this is a big Navy town, so um, yes. there were lots of, uh, 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 not a lot, but quite a few Hmong people who were in the, in the Navy, so... A couple of them actually reached out to me when I moved here, and so I was hanging out with them for a while. But most of them have been like have moved, like whether the Navy like moved them somewhere else or whatever. But uh, other than that, no, there aren't a lot of Hmong people here at all. I mean, hell, besides me, I can't. Uh, well, my cousin is in the Air Force, and he lives in this area. Um, but other than that, I don't. There's not really anyone else. Just me. Okay. Oh, surprisingly, Hmong people like to avoid side of the East Side. I have no idea why either. Yeah, right. Like it's there's like not really like a reason, I guess. But yeah, there just not are not a lot of home people here. Um, and my cousin only lives here because he's in the air force, and they, the air force moved him here. So okay, so that brings me to my next question then. So how does the Hmong culture affect what you do for your current job then? You know, I, I love I love that you asked that question because like I realize that more now that I'm older than I did like back then. But I think I mean Hmong culture was also was 
probably the biggest reason why I wanted to be a reporter to begin with because, like I said, you know, it, it just focuses around storytelling and, you know, the way we grew up, like, you know, you, you know, your grandma and your parents always tell you stories about stuff, you know, so um, there's there's that. I mean, it, mom culture has really affected my career choice to begin with. And then now that I'm, like, doing it, I think mom culture has had a big impact on what I do from day to day. You know, I think I think the way that um, the the way that I interact with people um, is is very like I don't know how else to say, it, but it's very mom. And I think there's a lot of appeal to that when you're constantly like talking to people. You know, um, every day, I mean, every day I talk to strangers. You know, and I think that you know how like you know how like when you when you're a guest in someone's home, like a mom house, they're very like warm, they're very welcoming, and um, you know, being able to apply that to what I do. I think it makes people like comfortable when they talk to me and I'm a complete stranger, you know, because a lot of times when, when I, it, you know, there are lots of times where I talk to people who are like in the most vulnerable like state of mind, you know, because someone they love just died or you know, they just, you know, like lost their house because a hurricane ripped through our area. So, you know, being able to kind of exude that like, like warm feeling, you know, uh, welcome and feeling to people is like very important. I think, and I do attribute a lot of that to just like growing up home. You know, like you always treat people who come to your home, you know, with a lot of respect and a lot of warmth. And I think that's been very applicable for me. Wow. <laughs> so it was a very drawn out response, but yeah. No, that's that's a good response. Let's let's have some fun now. I first, let's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's have fun. Let's get away let's from the fun. new stuff. So I hear that. Uh, you're really into sport, and particularly basketball, with yeah, a yeah. certain Minnesota team. Yeah, I'm a big t- I'm a big fan. I've been my whole life. I mean, I've known Sue a long time, and <laughs> yeah. I've always been a t- I've always been a T-Wolves fan. Me and Sue go way back. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I've always been a big T-Wolves fan. So, so uh, yeah, let's go ahead. What's your opinion on the state of Timberwolves right now? Man, you know, it's I, I don't even know what to say, man. It's I'm still like trying to like like reason with myself to like not be slightly upset about that Wiggins contract because like I feel like we're really stuck. I feel he's like we're really. St- he's still yeah, young. He's, he's still young, and I mean he's still young. He puts up his numbers or whatever, but he's not very efficient, and he's not really like he. I don't know. I mean th- that thing is kind of frustrating, but. You know, I, I, I try not to, like, bash my own teams, but, like, that situation is, like, really upsetting. And then, you know, all the just all the Jimmy Butler drama this year, um, you know, it was kind of weird because, like, with all the Jimmy Butler drama going on, Cat just, like, was, like, not the same. But then as soon as Butler was gone, Cat was, like, putting up huge numbers, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. It would be interesting to see, like, this next season, like, you know, how 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 they play, like, right out, right out of the gate because with no more Jimmy... Like just, it seems like there's like less drama, so we'll see. I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I don't have a good prediction for for what this next season season is gonna look like. So playoff, maybe as like an eight seed. I don't, but the West is good, man. The West is really good, you know. All right. So uh, speaking of cat, did you see the All NBA team? Yeah, yeah, I did. So did I he did. get snubbed? Did cat get snubbed? That's thirty two million dollar two that he lost right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. I mean, I mean. I, I'm a little biased, so of course I'm gonna say that he's snubbed. But I mean, when I look at that, when I look at the All NBA teams, I mean, there's there's also not really anyone that like I strongly felt shouldn't have been on there. So, but my Minnesota bias, yeah, I, I would think Cash should have been that All NBA. That could give an extra motivation to play him harder. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And 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 and, and Cat and Cat seems like he seems like a good dude. Like he seems like he's a smart dude. So you know, I think he can channel that frustration into like having a, a good season and you think they got robbed in the uh, the lottery Lakers moved up they moved down oh hell yeah what the I I <laughs> thought for sure we were gonna like get a much higher pick but yes. whatever what was that some more Timo was 11 Laker was 12 and somehow Laker went to number four and Timo dropped to 12 yeah we you know we <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know at least you know, the good thing is like you know with with this draft class, I I feel like it's not very deep anyway. So I mean, unless you get like a top five pick, uh, I, I, you know, yeah, you know, I, it is, I heard it's it is top two heavy, top two heavy. Yeah, 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 Probably yeah. It's gonna be Zion and and Jay Morant. So yeah, unless if the Clippers get Leonard or Butler, yeah, I feel like we can get that eight seed. Because last time I heard uh, the Clippers, they don't want. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Kawhi took them to the like the NBA Finals. Like, 
I, oh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe Kawhi might stay. Who knows? I'm sure you saw that dunk on uh, Giannis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Kawhi's a beast, man. Kawhi's a beast. Wait, so speaking of sports, do you cover sports? Um, I don't really hear, no. I, I, I haven't done sports here. Like, I'll do, like, sports-related type stories, but I don't cover sports here. When I was in Eugene, I did, like, a little bit of sports, but not a lot. So when when I lived in Eugene, Oregon, that's where the Ducks, uh, the Oregon Ducks are. And it was a much smaller station, smaller staff, so if they were shorthanded, I would help them, you know, shoot games and stuff. But um, other than that, no, I don't really do sports. Um. You know, I think early on I was trying to decide whether I wanted to do news or sports. I think I, like, enjoy watching sports, but I, I didn't necessarily want to, like, make my entire life about sports, you know? And, and, and props to all my friends who, who are sports reporters, and but they are, like, always face down in, like, some sort of sports story. And so I, I didn't want to, like, really be that focused on sports. I want to just be able to, like, watch it and kind of, like, enjoy it versus like sitting here watching it and then i'm trying i'm trying to think like you know uh like too in depth into it yeah plus that feels like it's a lot of traveling dude yeah it is a lot of traveling speaking of which do you prefer to do that travel out of state sometimes and cover well i guess you say you don't do sports though that wouldn't really pertain to you yeah yeah we don't really travel much unless it's like such a big story that you know like we want like our station wants to send someone to go cover it but yeah, usually we don't really, um, we don't usually uh, travel too far. I just gotta ask, since you said you did a little, uh, a little work at WCCR, correct? Yeah, I, I interned at CCO. Yep. So uh, recently, I'm sure you might have met it. You might not have met him. Mark Rosen. Have you ever met him before? Yeah, Mark. Mark was Mark was there when I was uh, interning there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Legendary. Uh, retired now. Yeah, man. Good. That guy's been in the business. He was in the business for. I think 50 years or – it's 50. either 50 years or more than 50, 50 years. Yeah, that, is like, 50. that is like – dude, that is a legendary career, you know. And, and you know, again, I mean, just being able to be in a newsroom with people like that, you know, as an intern, like as a college student was like beyond like amazing, you know. Because, yeah, like I grew up watching Mark Rosen too, you know. So, um, so I brought that up because is that your goal, 50 years? How long do you see yourself doing this? <laughs> Is my goal to be in the business for 50 years? I don't know, man. We'll, we'll, we'll see, you know? I mean, whew, that's a long-ass time. Well, speaking of goal, <laughs> uh, are you planning to stay at Virginia for a long while, or do you plan to uh, move it anytime soon as well, or in the future? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I think I'm not too particularly, like, picky with where, like, I could move or where I could live. I mean, I think let's, well, with, with this... With this career, I think what's important to me when I, you know, if I were to go to a different station, I think what's important to me is one, is it a good fit for me, and two, am I gonna like like the, am I gonna like the city? But like, I don't really have like a list of like cities where I'm like, hey, these are all the places that I want to go or live. And you know, of course, like coming home one day would be would be great. You know, that'd be awesome. You know, because I think I have a lot more value there because there's you know a lot of more people there. Um, it's spot open. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I think there were. I think I would have a lot more. You know, I think having that community there is like is, is awesome. You know, and you know, of course, coming home one day would be awesome. But I think right now I'm kind of just like you know, I'm here. I'm focused, and you know, we'll see what's next. I mean, I don't really know. You know, I don't really know what's next. So, so who who are your who are the uh, the people around you and the uh, the news anchor world that uh, influence you or stuff that like uh, people that you right really appreciate they they teach you a lot and stuff that you're pick, plucking up on them right right well i mean first and foremost you know i, I have to i have to give a major shout out to like you know the all to all the home people who are in the business before me i mean you know i definitely wasn't the first and i think a lot of them really paved the way for me to get to where i was or where i am when i was trying to figure out like how do i break into this business because you guys know like you know, when you watch TV, like, whether you're watching a TV show or whether you're watching the news, like, you know, we don't see people that look like us, you know? Yes. Uh, we especially don't see home people, right? So I'm trying to figure out, like, how do I break into this business, you know? Um, and um, at the time, there was uh, an anchor in Wisconsin uh, named Bao Bang. 
I found her and I reached out to her and she was, I mean, she was great. Like I reached out to her, she responded, she kind of really helped me like, well, you basically just like get my stuff together to like to, to send out. So, I mean, there, there were a lot of people like Bao who were already in the business who were doing it, who were like great that, um, really like showed me how it was done. And so, I mean, just major shout out to all of them, like from Bao, Bang, uh, uh, Gia Bang, who's, uh, an anchor of Fresno. She's about to leave Fresno to go somewhere else. That announcement is soon to come. Nancy Yang, she works at NPR there in the Twin Cities. Nancy's great. Um, and then um, for a while, Bo Zhang was working at Care 11. And then uh, Chao Zhang works for the Star Tribune. So there, there are more people in the business. And I think a lot of them, like, you know, whether I've been in direct contact with them or I'm close to them or not, like, they really have, like, paved the way, you know, for someone like me to come up and kind of get in the business and, like, actually do it, you know. And then also, like, you know, other people that I met along the way just interning and stuff were, were, were huge. I mean, I think my mentor, Jason DeRussia, who is the morning anchor at WCCO, um, I think Jason's always been very, like, supportive of, of my career. Jason's always been very, like, he keeps up with me, you know, to just make sure that, like, you know, if I have any questions or if he has any advice for me. And then I was, you know, I, I was always, like, unsure of how, how to, like, once I break into the business, like, like basically, like my big question for myself was like, am I gonna have it? Like, am I gonna be like timid, or am I gonna be, you know, like, am I can yeah. I be tough when I need to be tough? And so when I was intern in, interning at Channel Five, uh, their investigative <laughs> producer was my direct boss. Her name's Beth McDonough. She still works there. She's a reporter. She is like so crazy smart. She is so tough. And uh, when I was interning for her, she 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 was tough on me. She made me do a lot of work. But she really, like, she basically, like, kind of took me under her wing and, and just showed me that, like, you can be tough when you need to be tough. You know, it's, you know, and, and I, I just had to, like, learn that from her, you know. And I still keep in touch with her nowadays. And, you know, so I, I do have people who are, like, very active with my career still who still, like, help me grow, you know, even though I've been doing it for a little bit. But, you know, they've been doing it longer. So they, they help me grow and help me stay on path. And so... Was there anybody along on this journey of yours that say you couldn't do it? And now, and have you gone up to that person and say, <laughs> I did it? And say, shut the hell up, hater. No, no. Uh, <laughs> no, you know, I think the one, one thing about me is that, like, I have, like, I have, like, a core group of people who, who, who've always been really supportive of me. And um, I've always tried to just focus on that, you know. I think I have people who've been very supportive, and I try to focus on, like, you know, making them proud. But of course, like along the way, you know, um, th th there are people who, who doubt you and who tell you like you, you can't make it. You know, I think things that things that I would hear people say, I, I've never confronted anyone, by the way, like, I, you know, even if I heard that you said something, you know, I just leave it. I don't I don't need to get involved with all that. But, um, you know, I mean, it, it is, you know, like, like I said, there's not a lot of monk in the business. So when you're trying to take a path that like isn't a common path, where you haven't seen a lot of us do it and, and succeed in it, yeah, of course, people are going to say what they want to say, but, you know, I, I, I try to channel that, like, frustration into, like, just succeeding. I mean, what's the best way to, to you know, shut someone up? And that's to succeed, you know, and to prove them wrong. Oh, come on. I'm sure there's probably not one guy you're competing with, that one guy that, <laughs> I'm going to be on TV before, and you'll never be on TV, and now you're on TV, and that person is making copies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, no comment. <laughs> okay, at least we noticed someone. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a it's a. I mean, you know, it's 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 a it's a it's a tough business. I mean, it's 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 a tough business at, at times, very cutthroat, and so you know, you run into people along the way. But you know, I, I try not to let that derail me at all. Good okay. trait to have. Fair enough. <laughs> So, so, you know, uh, so aside from just working, what do you like to do during spare time? Well, I binge watch a lot of TV shows. Um, <laughs> I do that a lot. <laughs> I, I like to hang out with my friends. Um, I, I love food, and so I explore a lot, I guess. Um, I live by the beach, so I go to the beach. Um, I like to, you know, watch sports, hang out with my friends. I mean, I'm, I, I like, like, off the camera, I'm a pretty low-key guy, so... I don't really uh, do anything too crazy. All right. So, Jinyu, what advice would you give someone who wants to be a journalism, journalist or like an uh, anchor? 
I would just tell them that like to be persistent and not take no for an answer. I mean, I think that was what that was something that was really um, big for me. You know, I think uh, coming up in this business, I think uh, I think a lot of people. But like, like you run into a roadblock slot and you just can't really take no for an answer. I mean, you, you, you just always have to find a way, you know. And I think for, for me, you know, I think when I, when I applied to all the stations coming out of college, right, I wanted to get a job lined up before May when I graduated. And I got, I mean, I had so many rejection letters and I just kept saying, you know, I just kept telling myself, like, fuck it, I'm going to just keep applying, you know, so yep. I just kept applying, you know, and uh, eventually, you know, I started getting offers, and I mean, that was solely because, like, I just was like, I'm not going to say no for an answer, you know, so I would encourage, you know, like, students coming up who are going to get into the business to just, like, stick with it, and, you know, like, stick with it, and work hard, I mean, you have to work hard, you know, to, to be in this business, not to not only be in the business, but to succeed in the business, you know, so... Just work hard. I mean, I, you know, I think um, I would love to see more more home kids in in the industry. Um, we have big communities out there that need us to tell stories, and so I would love to see more home kids, you know, come up in the business. Okay. Uh, so, where do you see yourself five years from now, then? Report news somewhere. <laughs> Tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, report news somewhere. Uh, you know, location is uh, uh, yet to be determined, but hopefully still doing this. You know, because I, I do, I do love it. So. All right. So with that, we're gonna advance to our famous lightning round. Okay, lightning <laughs> round. I'm nervous. <laughs> All right. So our lightning round consists of three questions. Uh, same exact three questions that we ask our guests. So you ready for this? Yep. All right. So Let's question number one: Where will you go for a vacation spot and why? Right now, off the top of my head. I would probably say Washington D.C. Just, I, I love D.C. I think there's a lot of history there. There's a lot to do, like just great food. Um, yeah, you I mean everyone knows the whole thing about D.C. It's awesome. I heard that yep. the uh, cost of living is pretty high over there, right? Uh, yeah, D.C. Yeah, it's fairly expensive um, to live in D.C. But uh, that's why I go to vacation. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, question number two: What is your favorite book that you have read so far? My favorite book that I've read so far? Oh my god! When was the last time I read a book? Oh boy! You know, actually, I you know what book I really like, and I read this in like high school. I read um Alan Iverson's autobiography, Ooh, um, and I and I really liked it. And what's crazy is like so. AI was also a big reason why I wanted to move to this area because he's from this area. So oh. there's just a lot of there's just like a lot of um, a lot of things in culture that like that started in this area, you know. Um, and so that really drew me to this area with sports and just like uh, like you know like music, lots of famous musicians from this area. So oh, for the people who that. don't know, AI Alan Iverson, former basketball player. Yeah, just for yeah. the listeners, a really good one at that too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so question number three: What is one thing that you cannot live without? I mean, this is like the most cliche, obvious answer, but probably my my iPhone. I mean, I'm on that thing like twenty four seven. I'm always on like Twitter. I'm always on like you know all of, like check my emails and stuff. So yeah, I mean, if if, if my phone crapped out right now, like I I don't know what I would do. I see um, your constant updates on Twitter. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, I, it's like, wow, do you have a life at all? <laughs> just I know, right? I, but it's true, though. Like, I'll, I'll be sitting at my desk at work, and I'll have Twitter up on my computer, like, at my desk. And then, like, my work phone will have Twitter open, and then my personal phone will have, like, Twitter open. And I'm just like, what am I, you know? Like, I, I, I'm always on there, so. All right. So, to know where or how can people reach you? Um, yeah, you can reach me on Facebook, um, Instagram, uh, Twitter, um, you know, my, my handles are easy. It's just my, my, my first and last name. So just at Chinuher. Yeah. We also link uh, those on our website, moamericanbuzz.com as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone, you know, feel free to reach out. I mean, I'm always, I'm always, uh, I'm usually available and I try to be as responsive as I can. So yeah, I, I, I would love if people reached out. That'd be great. All right. Sounds good. All right. Yeah, yeah, thank you for uh, for taking time out of your busy schedule to come yeah, here, man. Yeah, but no, thanks so much for your time. Yeah, and I know you're a really busy person, but thanks so much. 
Uh, yeah, of course, again, anytime. Man. Yeah, if you guys ever want to follow up or anything, let me know. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just let me know when it, when it gets uh, posted up, and I, I'll share it. If you like this podcast, then please share this with your friends and family. Also, please visit our website, mongamericanbuzz.com, for more details as well as links to our special guests. Last but not least, please subscribe to our podcast to get the latest episodes. Thanks for listening.